Last year, we did a detailed study at the World Bank of what drives people's or citizens' ease of staying in a city. And citizens were asked, what is that single domain, what is that single activity which would make your life comfortable in a city? Unequivocally, the answer came, transportation. So environment and transportation are two biggest factors which add to the ease of living, ease of living index for citizens in a city. And that's the topic for this session. Mr. Hogan Lan, Senior Innovation Advisor, Nordic Innovation. And let me introduce him. Mr. Hogan Lan is responsible for the Nordic Prime Minister's Initiative on Sustainable Cities and the Nordic Innovation Program on Nordic Smart Mobility and Connectivity. Uh, our belief is that by working together, we preserve the ability to adopt quickly, boost innovation, and improve global market opportunities among the Nordic companies. And that's the Nordic Smart Mobility and Connectivity Initiative that I work with. It's health, demography, and quality of life, which Rasmus works with as well. And then it's also Nordic Sustainable Business Transformation. And I think that all of us have seen these goals of the United Nations, and we try to focus on making them become reality. Our mission at Nordic Innovation is to contribute to sustainable growth, increased entrepreneurship, innovation, and competitiveness of the Nordic businesses. And together, our intention is that we can be a little bit stronger looking at the scale of the economy and, and other factors. Why do we look at India in specific? It's because of the impact that we actually believe that we can make. Our ambition, we believe that we want to position the Nordics as front runners, where we partially still are. Uh, we've come quite a long way. And our intention is that this hopefully will lead to integrated seamless mobility within this field, uh, paving the way for front runners of mobility, and a speedy transition to sustainability. Why smart mobility and connectivity is one of these initiatives, you might ask. Uh, because there is a transformation ongoing, either we like it or not. And if we're not a part of that, our companies will miss out. Uh, there are also mega trends happening, affecting the sector in large, which we can't affect either, really. I mean, the digitalization, as you mentioned, with the smartphones, either we like it or not, it's, it's going to be quite hard to live without accepting the smartphones and accepting the possibilities and also the, the challenges related to it. Mobility in the Nordic region, we think that we come, have come quite far on that one. We have a very, very strong maritime sector, uh, which is caused by our location up north. We had to develop that through our times. Uh, we've also come quite far regarding the sustainable cities. We have a good platform to, to lean on. And these are some just examples of, of initiatives that we like and that we have requested in these calls. And I mean, for India, last mile distribution is, of course, of high interest, and everything else should be of interest for, for more or less anywhere. So that's us and what we do. Thank you. Namely, mobility, health, and quality of life sustainable business transformation. I think quality of life, at the end of the day, what is most important is that we improve the quality of life of the citizens in a smart city. And that's what uh, Mr. Hogan emphasized on. Uh, our next speaker is Mr. Brian. What we do in Ramble Smart Mobility, we work with the cities all over the world. Um, to create a more sustainable and uh, a more livable city for people. We in Ramble, we have a global presence of uh, 300 offices across 35 uh, countries worldwide. We have a especially strong uh, representation in the Nordics, in the UK, the North America, continental Europe, Middle East, and uh, also Asia Pacific. We are 150 people from Norway, Sweden, Finland, Denmark, Germany, Singapore, and India working in the smart mobility division. Ramble in India has been uh, operating in the re region since 1997, mm, and we work with building engineering, we work with transport, telecom, environment and health, and oil and gas. So smart mobility means different things for different people. But with the challenges cities faces uh, regarding congestion, air pollution, CO2 emission, etc. 
It's clear that people and goods need to move uh, more safely, needs to move more efficiently, more sustainably, simply smarter. Our foundation in hol is holistic planning, uh, including the fundamental modes of walking, cycling, uh, public transport and cars, as well as the new services and modes such as mobility as a service, e-mobility, micro-mobility, autonomous vehicles, strategic parking, and digital solutions. For all the trips I need to make each day, I have options at my fingertips, based on how fast I need to get there, what I need to bring, or how far I need to go. I enjoy living in a city that has made all this possible. That's what smart mobility means to me. I think the single most important underlying statement that Brian made was, smart mobility is all about people. Thank you, Brian. That was a very nice presentation. My next speaker is Mr. Vinod Kumar, who is a strategic business development manager for TomTom. Smart cities is, has been a buzzword for the last five years in all the tech conferences, right? Uh, cities have been keeping the people at the center, building all the connected infrastructure, trying to connect all the mobility infrastructure as well as part of these initiatives. So once all the infrastructures are getting connected, there's like humongous amount of data that's uh, coming through. So this is an aggregation of uh, mobility uh, data coming uh, from uh, New Delhi, uh, put together for last one year. So these are anonymized GPS traces, uh, accumulated from smartphones, smartphone applications, et cetera, and put together to reveal what are the mobility patterns for the city, how the congestion points for the city has been changing, where are the hotspots in the city, and how over a period of time uh, the mobility pattern itself is uh, uh, going to evolve. So uh, data is very fascinating, right? You could figure out what has been uh, happening in the city, and you could also figure out what's going to happen uh, going forward. So in that sense, data is going to be uh, the core to enable all of our uh, sustainable urban mobility initiatives going forward. Starting from multimodal commute, when we connect the data from uh, our varied modes of transport, such as metros, buses, et cetera, we, that's when we'd be able to create an efficient public transit system. Data is again at the core to build a viable e-mobility uh, charging infrastructure for the cities today. So at TomTom, we have aggregated uh, data for entire India going back to last three years. Uh, these are all anonymized GPS traces for all the major cities. So what this means is we have wealth of data available for all the cities in India to make use of and create their uh, uh, sustainable ur urban uh, mobility initiatives. So they, they, it's almost a cliche today to say that data is the new oil. If that's the case, uh, uh, we indeed have a lot of oil for all the cities in India. So you superimpose this wealth of data on uh, smart maps. That's when uh, we have the smart mobility applications to manage the real-time traffic situation, congestion situation, and regulate the traffic situation in cities. Right, so in a way, we become eyes for the cities on the road. We help them answer questions such as how fast the city is moving, where are uh, the major congestion points in the city, how the speed profile of various road segments have been changing over a period of time, where are the major uh, bottlenecks, where are the major uh, uh, roadblocks, where are the major uh, road services happening. So once we aggregate all this data, that becomes a granular uh, uh, data available throughout the city for every road segment, which helps the city command and control centers to regulate the traffic and uh, uh, make the congestion situation better in the cities itself. So these are uh, uh, the suite of products that we uh, uh, work with to enable cities uh, fight congestion, starting from our digital maps to real-time traffic data to the wealth of historical data and uh, location-based APIs to enable uh, urban services. I think Mr. Vinod Kumar brought about the most important piece of information, and that is data. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vinod Kumar. My next uh, speaker is Dr. Sonamne. He is the CEO of the Smart uh, City uh, Nagpur. Uh, of Nagpur. Nagpur. Yeah. And Nagpur, for those who don't belong to India, 
as the centralized location of India and as a very, very important city in this, in this country. We are implementing Nagpur Smart City project wherein we have a vert vertical called mobility with a view to improve uh, traffic situation by implementing some ICT-based interventions. Even though the area is only 227 square, square kilometers, we have 3,400 kilometers of roads wherein we can experiment both things, non-motorized transport and motorized transport. What we need to do is only to provide infrastructure by improving our footpaths. As on today, the footpaths are not walkable. So we need to improve our footpaths. We have started the drive. And in terms of uh, share a bike system, as on today, we can provide 700 kilometers of roads. What is needed is now the technology which is abreast of time and not the outdated technologies which we have been using for years together. So I would request the industry representatives present here to come to Nagpur, offer their te uh, technical solutions so that we can keep ourselves abreast of time. May it be uh, e-mobility, battery operated buses which will be most I think a suitable option right now, considering today's needs, people need speedy solutions, faster solutions. They want to reach in a shorter duration, in a short time. And that's why they opt for two-wheelers or three-wheelers, rather than the public transport system. We are in the age of now a hyperloop. Within the city, it won't help, but city-to-city -city connectivity through hyperloop is also going to be a solution and that is what is mobility for Indians. Speed, speed and speed. We have, ever taken, we have overtaken the speed of sound. We would like to overtake the speed of light. And that day is not far away. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sunamne. Uh, the last speaker for today is Mr. Das from SAP India. And Mr. Anindu Roy Das has over nine years of experience in the field of public sector and technology. He has worked with several central and state governments to conceptualize government vision and implement technology to drive innovation and improve operational efficiency. What is the big picture? The big picture is today globally we spend around $7 trillion on mobility. This is cars, uh, transport, public transport systems. Of course, public transport adoption in India is very low. But excluding airfare, we are probably spending somewhere around $7 trillion. And there's some significant development that has happened across this ecosystem. And of course, we have the unsung heroes of mobility, the public transport system, uh, London Metro, the tubes. In, in, uh, in India, you have Delhi Metro and everything. Uh, fighting to struggle, aging infrastructure, uh, don't know how to really get or attract people or youth. As right, Sir rightly said, you know, you are in a rush to reach your destination. You either take your uh, two-wheeler or you use a uh, mobility at a convenience that is a Grab, Uber, Ola, book the cab and go there. Uber today is going and talking to cities and saying that we are going to adopt the mobility of the city. So we are going to become the Amazon of mobility for your particular city. What are the public transport companies doing, the public uh, state departments? Transport of London, they have a bold ambition. Uh, they say that we want to reduce or we want to convert 80% of mobility within the city through public transport, foot or cycle. Excellent. Something again very interesting. I would have never seen Mercedes and BMW saying that let's shake hands. They said, let's get together. It's becoming difficult for us to figure out. We were the champions of mobility. We used to take people from point A to point B. Most of these automobile companies are, uh, I know Volkswagen has tied up with Apple, Jaguar has tied up with uh, Google. Everyone has a technology partner. So they, are, they understand that mobility is just not going to be about OEMs or automobile companies. It's going to be technology. And traditionally, if you look at mobility, how did you reach from point A to point B? You had to buy a ticket. You had to buy a ticket, a token. And what is a ticket, a token? It is permission to travel. You get permission authorized that you can travel today. Uh, Delhi Metro or most of the leading metros in the world, Oyster Card or whatever you call it, you have a card which has some value added to it. 
Today, what is there? Connectivity is there everywhere. So what we are saying is, why don't you migrate to account-based ticketing? Instead of the card having the value and the intelligence being captured in the edge, why don't you have an account which is an identity of you, that me, Anindo Roy, I've swapped in at this particular point A and I'm swiping out in particular point B. And what it also does is I can aggregate all this swiping in, swiping out at the end of the day and charge the bill. And what also it does is the public transport company can give a lot of flexibility to the customers. I can say, the city gives you mobility as a service. Mobility is offered to you as a service by the city. Now the question is, who provides this? So what are the business models? How do we make the uh, journey an experience? How do we ensure that every ecosystem player contributes from taking the citizen from the first mile to the last mile? Once there is the connected traveler, once I'm able to achieve this in the cities, what I'm essentially saying is every individual who travels is connected. He researches, he buys the ticket from booking your travel from your city to another city to reaching that city, spending time, hotel, time, everything can be done only through an app, only through a platform. And let's see, we, we go there. It best is to bring it together. And of course, as SAP, we understand it's an integrated ecosystem play. So anyone who would like to un, you know, talk more, how we can partner or the services we go to the city, I'll be happy to have a conversation. Thank you very much. With that, we come to the end of the session. We've covered some very, very important points. Mobility, urban mobility is undergoing speedy change. I mean, look at just the city of Delhi. In the last 15, 20 years, the kind of change we have witnessed in, in city mobility is, is phenomenal. So we're going to see a lot of revolution in urban mobility in the years to come. I wish to thank every participant sitting on the dais. I wish all of you a very pleasant evening. Thank you very much. <laughs>